In this video, we're going to preview or get an introduction to macromolecules and, and talk about what macromolecules are and some different types of macromolecules and kind of get an introduction to each of the different types. Uh, we'll look at these more specifically in both labs and the stuff that we do in class, but this is just an introduction to overall what these different types of macro uh, molecules do. And macro means large, and molecules obviously is a molecule, and so with this we're looking at larger molecules um, that perform different functions and do different things within the cell. Uh, one of those being proteins. Um, we've talked about carbohydrates a little bit. Uh, lipids we haven't really talked about in class necessarily, but those are fats. And then nucleic acids we just talked a lot about in our DNA unit, uh, those being what makes up DNA. And before we get into that, um, we need to take a look at carbon because carbon is found in pretty much every living thing and it is an extremely common molecule that's used to make up living things. Um, the unique thing or the important thing about carbon is that it's able to make four bonds. Um, when you get into chemistry next year, you'll look at uh, the different types of bonds. We've talked about hydrogen bonds a little bit. Uh, carbon has this unique ability that it can form bonds with four other uh, atoms and so in this picture here this is kind of a nice representation it's got four little hands and so it can make bonds with up to four other um, four other atoms or it can make double bonds um, and because of this it can form branched rings long chains or uh, or rings just a single ring and 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 this is what creates a lot of these different molecules that we're going to look at uh, fats have long chains of carbons together sugars are made of rings um, all of these different molecules use carbon as really kind of a building point there's a lot of other atoms uh, connected to these molecules but carbon is the main molecule that makes up most of the living things that we see on the planet and in carbon's ability to make something called a covalent bond, uh, because it can form, uh, has, can, can make four bonds, uh, it forms this thing called a covalent bond. And a covalent bond is a, is a relatively pretty strong bond. Um, and what happens is uh, it occurs when uh, two atoms um, are, are sharing electrons. So we've got uh, a pair of electrons that are shared by two different atoms. So here's our carbon atom. Uh, the blue is carbon's electron. So carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. And to have a full outer ring or to have a full amount of electrons, uh, it wants to have a total of eight. Hydrogen has one electron normally, and it wants to have two total. And so what carbon and hydrogen does is there will be four uh, hydrogens that bond to this carbon and so carbon is getting a total of eight, two, four, six, eight electrons. Hydrogens are getting two electrons. And so all of these elements, uh, you could think of them as kind of being happy or probably a better way to say that is stable. Um, this is a pretty strong bond uh, in comparison to like hydrogen bonds where it's just kind of a weak attraction between different hydrogens and oxygens. This covalent bond is, is a pretty strong bond. And so again, with covalent bond, the important thing to remember is that we're sharing electrons. Uh, two other things that we want to look at before we get into some specifics for the different types of macromolecules is this thing called a monomer. And a monomer is a, is a word to represent or to explain the simplest unit of a molecule. So some of these um, molecules can join together that we're going to look at. They can join together and they can build larger molecules called a polymer. And a polymer is a larger or more of those monomers put together. So a monomer is the simplest unit and we can put those together to form a larger molecule, whereas a polymer is multiple or repeating, several repeating units of monomers. So let's take a look at the different types of macromolecules we're gonna talk about. Carbohydrates being the first, uh, and they're very common. Uh, we eat them every day. Um, plants are, are a great example of, of where we get carbohydrates from. Uh, and they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The monomers of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides, meaning one saccharide. A saccharide is a sugar, and those three types of sugars are glucose, fructose, and galactose. You've probably heard of all three of those. Uh, glucose probably being the most common. We talked about it during cellular respiration. Um, those are the monomers of carbohydrates, and we call those monomers monosaccharides. The polymer, some examples would be starch, cellul cellulose, glycogen, and chitin. Some functions of carbohydrates, uh, it's a short-term energy storage. And some food examples would be like pastas and breads and potatoes. Those would be examples of carbohydrates. Uh, 
Proteins, you probably definitely heard of proteins before, oftentimes in lots of meats or dairy products, and they are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. The monomers of a protein, as we talked about in our DNA unit, are amino acids. So a bunch of amino acids put together make proteins. And a polymer is a protein. Uh, that is the polymer because a bunch of amino acids, the monomers put together make a polymer, which is a protein. Proteins have all kinds of different functions and jobs, and they really control pretty much most of the things that happen in our bodies and most other organisms. They can be enzymes, they can help transport materials, structure, support, uh, the list goes on and on and on. A great example, or two great examples, would be hemoglobin, which in red blood cells allows uh, red blood cells to carry oxygen. So blood is actually carrying oxygen to different parts of the body that, that need that oxygen. And then hormones, uh, which are responsible for causing different changes uh, in our body, particularly around 11, 12, uh, 13 year olds. Uh, hormones cause some different, different changes in, in humans. The other, two nucle uh, the other two macromolecules that we're going to look at are lipids and nucleic acids. Uh, lipids are fats, it's another name for fat, and they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they don't have any monomers or polymers, and we'll look at their structure a little bit more detail later. Uh, their functions, really long-term energy storage. Uh, you think about organisms that hibernate, like bears, for example. During the summer, they're eating up a lot of foods, particularly a lot of fatty foods, foods that have, are, are high in lipids, so that they can build up a large fat reserve that helps, them to, uh, helps provide them energy while they're hibernating and during the winter when there's less food available. Uh, fat also um, is used as insulation. You think about um, organisms that live in the ocean, uh, blubber, like in whales or sea lions, is a form of insulation. Um, it's also used as structural component and it's found in the cellular membrane, as we talked about in our cells unit. And some good examples include uh, waxes, steroids, butter, oil, and then fats. And lastly, nucleic acids are made of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, phosphorus, and nitrogen. Quite a few more elements than the other macromolecules. Uh, they, their monomers are a nucleotide. Uh, we talked about those during our, our DNA unit. And nucleotides put together can make DNA or RNA, depending on whether they're nucle uh, DNA nucleotides or RNA nucleotides. And their pr purpose or job or their function is really the instructions to make proteins, as we talked about and discussed. And then examples, again, would be DNA and RNA. We'll take a look at these uh, four different types of macromolecules in more detail in the coming uh, videos and coming lessons that we have in class, as well as the labs that we do to look at these more specifically.